Hey everyone. So we recently just flew down to Winnipeg, Manitoba to meet John Arbuthnot, the CEO of Delta 9, to take a tour through their state-of-the-art facility that's a little bit different than what you're probably used to. A lot of LPs either have these really large greenhouses or a large indoor facility, or maybe they're even growing outdoors, but Delta 9 took a different approach with their grow pod system. These grow pods, along with a few innovations along the way, have allowed Delta 9 to grow high-quality cannabis at one of the lowest cost per grams in the entire country, but also have a very unique risk mitigation feature to them, so if there's any type of crop failure, it's contained to a small amount instead of these very large millions of dollar crop failures that some of these LPs have already experienced. But I don't tell this story nearly good enough, so let's go over to Winnipeg to watch John tell it for himself. Let's take a trip to there now. Hey everyone, we're in Winnipeg, Manitoba, and we are here with John Arbuthnot, CEO of Delta 9. We're at the facility now because this is a facility that we haven't shown you in our, our platform before. I'm very curious to see what's going on. What are you gonna be showing us in there? Uh, well, this is uh, the Delta 9 Biotech facility, so 80,000 square foot licensed production, processing, and distribution facility uh, for Delta 9's cannabis operations. So, uh, one of the, I think, more unique state-of-the-art uh, growing platforms across the industry, but uh, let's go take a look. Absolutely, let's go. So what do we have at the first room here? Yeah, so all of the plants uh, in our production facility begin their life uh, in this area. Uh, now our first run of production for any genetic is from seed. Uh, everything from there is via plant cloning. Uh, effectively, we're using a process of taking small plant clippings, uh, isolating a specific genetic, taking thousands of clippings at a time, uh, and moving them into our nursery areas here. Uh, first seven to 14 days uh, is really just focused on rooting. Uh, we're looking for those plants to create a rooting system uh, that makes the plants sustainable before they move out uh, into the, uh, call it transition areas. Uh, they'll spend their next two weeks in transition, uh, really just with a focus on getting some vertical growth, uh, getting the plants ready to go into production. Uh, then we make a move into an actual grow pod uh, where the flowering cycle goes. And, and how many of these uh, sections do you have or how many pods do you have strictly for nursing? Uh, so right now under license, we have about 40 areas that are licensed for what we call support. Uh, so two main types of grow pods in this facility. Uh, the flowering pods obviously are for the production output capacity. We have 164 pods currently licensed. Uh, for production output. Uh, the balance of the pods are what we call support. And all of these support activities, the, uh, the nursery, the uh, vegetative growth, the trimming, processing, packaging activities, laboratory, all of that occurs in those supporting pods. Very nice. And we've got a little bit of an image here as well. Is this them in here? I can only imagine so. <laughs> yeah, all of the plants you can see through the monitors. Uh, we actually have over 1,000 cameras in operation in the facility right now. So every square foot of the facility uh, is meticulously tracked uh, from a security standpoint. Uh, other big benefit, I think, to this type of multi-stage growing operation uh, is it's very efficient. Uh, so typically, uh, you know, in a grow facility, you're going to see a lot of unutilized square footage. Uh, because we grow on multiple levels, the few hundred uh, pods that we have here, we grow at over 100% uh, capacity. So this larger area of our facility, this phase one area, is 40,000 square feet. We actually have 41,000 square feet of flowering canopy just in this area. So again, very unique from an efficiency standpoint. Absolutely. Where's the next step? <laughs> next stop is flowering. Let's go. So we're walking in this room, there's a lot of pods. Uh, what are we seeing right now? Yeah, so every grow pod up and down this aisle way here is production or flowering output capacity. Uh, as we move those very small plants into the actual production areas, uh, we're going to change them into the flowering cycle where they will live out the next eight to 12 weeks of their uh, production cycle. Uh, now a number of benefits, I think, to this grow pod production platform. Uh, the first is that it gives us a very high level of control over the growing environment. Uh, you'll see uh, every single grow pod is identical from the inside. Uh, and a lot of the idea here was towards standardization of output product and creating the highest quality uh, cannabis flower output product that we can 
uh, possibly achieve. So we dial in those factors that directly contribute to product quality, uh, temperature, humidity, light intensity, CO2 saturation, all of that's dialed in very precisely and it gives us a high quality standardized output product. The other big benefits of this type of growing platform and using all of these modular areas is compartmentalization of risk. Uh, you know, as much as this looks very much like a manufacturing facility, at the end of the day, this is an agricultural product. Uh, it is susceptible to plant disease, to infestation from pests. Uh, putting it into these compartmentalized areas means that if there is an instance of contamination, it's very unlikely that that's going to spread throughout the facility. Uh, we can effectively uh, quarantine and eliminate any risk uh, as it's occurring. So again, a number of benefits to growing on this type of platform as opposed to the big open uh, warehouse or greenhouse. See everywhere else, yeah. And we've got some signs here. If we're looking at this one, $13.145. we take a look inside? Absolutely. So we're currently on the second floor. A lot of the pods look identical because they are, but why are they stacked on top of one another? Yeah, so this is one of the few facilities you're gonna see in the industry that is growing on multiple floors. Uh, we actually feel there's a number of benefits to this type of facility design. I mean, A, it, it's a very efficient uh, use of the overall floor space in the building. So this area, our phase one, has 154 modular pods, uh, over 40,000 square feet. Uh, which means that actually from an output standpoint, in a 40,000 foot area, we have 41,000 square feet of flowering output canopy. So in terms of use of this Health Canada licensed production facility, it's one of the most efficient designs you'll see in the industry. But we find there's a number of, of benefits to operating a facility on multiple floors. And, you know, one example of that is uh, shared infrastructure. Uh, when it is daytime on the second floor as it is now, it's actually nighttime for all of our plants growing in the grow pods on the main floor which means for the same amount of electrical uh, infrastructure investment, we're doubling our output capacity. So really, everywhere possible, uh, this facility is built around design efficiency and maximizing output, maximizing return on invested capital. That's really interesting, because obviously you don't need the second fuse, you don't need the extra lines, you're getting the exact same amount of voltage coming through, and it's just switching from lights on, lights off. If the plants only need a 12-hour day, let's uh, maximize that from an efficiency standpoint. Very interesting. Well, where next are we going to on the tour? Next stop is fertigation. Let's go. Now we've seen a lot about your facility so far, but one of the things that all investors are talking about is the cost per gram. Obviously, the more you can get your costs down and prices stay up, you're able to get more profit. You had a really big change from your uh, Q1 to Q2 of $1.44 down to $1.05 of your cost per gram. How are you able to achieve that? Yeah, so I mean a lot of, and we've talked about efficiency already uh, here in the facility from a design perspective, but a lot of the investments uh, in the last six to 12 months for us have been towards operating efficiencies. Uh, fertigation, nutrient delivery becomes a major input, uh, both from a labor and from just a direct input cost perspective. Uh, behind us here is the fertigation room, uh, which was one of those large investments in efficiency that's now starting to pay off in the cost per gram. And how might that be? Let's go find out, because I'm curious how you brought it down by 40 cents. You're telling me this is what saved you all that money. Yeah, so this is our commercial scale fertigation room. Uh, it takes water in from the city of Winnipeg, uh, filters the water, dechlorinates, rechlorinates to the proper level for storage and plant health, uh, steps the water down into the step down tanks, adds the concentrated nutrients, and then pumps the water through a system of very complex uh, valves and manifolds out to every single grow pot in the building. Uh, effectively, we now feed the entire facility uh, on a laptop computer. Uh, so, I mean, major input uh, cost for any production facility in the cannabis industry is going to be labor. Uh, originally, our facility uh, was hand mixing nutrients, uh, wheeling carts of water to every single room to feed the plants on a daily basis. This has centralized that function. It's allowed our staff uh, to spend a lot more of their day paying attention to our plants uh, as opposed to sitting there watering. Uh, and that's reflected in the decrease in the cost per gram quarter over quarter. Yeah. 
Yeah, very good. And what made you think of this? Like, obviously, you start seeing that you need to get that cost down. You need to be competitive for a long time. Was it something you were contemplating for a long time, or was it like, hey, let's do this. This is the right time. Yes, I mean, a lot of our business is growing in stages. You do what's most simple on the front end, which would be hand mixing your nutrients and watering. Uh, from there, uh, you know, as you scale to thousands of plants in production, well, hand watering no longer makes sense anymore. You start to automate the nutrient delivery through drip feed. Uh, from there, wheeling hundreds of carts around the building, again, is now cumbersome. You start to come up with a centralized platform for delivering those nutrients to the room. So it's that logical or natural progression. We're taking conventional greenhouse technologies for nutrient delivery and fertigation systems and scaling that to meet our state-of-the-art growth pod technology. Very interesting. Well, we've seen a lot of different aspects of the actual growing plants, but there's also a lot of pods, if anyone's looking at your news releases, that are ready to go or licensed or about to get licensed. Let's go see what a finished pod was, because we saw what a growing pod looks like, one before it's finished, but you've got lots that are finished. Let's go find out what those look like as well. So where are we now? Uh, so this is a part of the phase two area of our facility. Uh, you'll recall phase one, uh, it was 154 modular pods, uh, all built out throughout the year 2018. Took our production capacity to about 4,200 kilos per year. Uh, from there, we started building out our phase two areas. We received our first expansion approval from Health Canada for 48 uh, additional grow pods in May of this year, uh, taking our production capacity to about 5,300 kilos per year. Uh, we also have another 95 pods in this phase 2A uh, area that you're about to see that are now pending Health Canada approval. So as the pods come off the manufacturing line, they're installed within the facility. We build out the supporting infrastructure, security systems. Uh, we apply to Health Canada. We confirm our readiness, uh, show them that all of the security systems, production systems have been installed. The pods are ready to be put into production. Let's go check. Them. Yeah, absolutely. So we're currently in the continuation of phase 2A. There are 95 more pods here waiting to be done. How many did we just tour earlier? How many do you currently have at this time that are up and running? Yeah, so 202 pods currently licensed by Health Canada, as you pointed to this area. 95 pods pending that Health Canada approval. As you can see, they're already in place. Uh, everything is ready to put into production. It's just getting that final sign off uh, from Health Canada to actually put these pods into production. That will take us up to about 8,500 kilos per year in overall output capacity. So, so when it comes to what you started off with last year, you've got 95 here, you've got over 200 in total. To start off last year, how many pods did you have running? Actually, if we look back to even the beginning of 2017, we only had 15 grow pods. Uh, so just to think of the the scale that we've been able to achieve over the last few years and scaling from those original 15, uh, finishing the phase one at 154. Uh, and by the time these areas are approved, we will have almost double that at almost 298 grow pods in production. It's a lot actually. It is the, for anybody, you're not getting the scale of how big this place. We've been walking in circles or in squares, almost in straight lines. Uh, it's massive. Now, I can imagine investor asking, you've got all these pods, you've got 95 here. What are the economics of one of these pods, uh, numbers-wise, for how much you're able to put into making it and then how much you're able to, to get in the year in revenue? Yeah, so, you know, I mean, we, we've talked about the benefits of the pods in terms of high quality and, and standardization and compartmentalization of risk, but, you know, there has to be an economic case for these pods as well. Now, because we're manufacturing them ourselves, our cost per pod uh, to have one uh, uh, constructed, installed within a facility is about $25,000. That pod will produce for us about 32 kilos of output cannabis uh, product per year, uh, which at today's wholesale rates is in the area of about $140,000 uh, in output uh, on an annualized basis. So our return on that entire uh, amount of invested capital actually comes in the very first crop cycle. There are very few manufacturing industries where you can see a full return on your invested capital uh, within you know, a 12 month time frame. So uh, again, we not only like the pods for all of the quality aspects, there's also a strong economic case in return on investor uh, capital uh, for the grow pod system. So you're saying each one of these is going to give you gross profit of $140,000 in a 12 month span of time? That's correct. So that one's gonna give you $140,000? That one's $140,000. This one's gonna give you $140,000? That one's $140,000. What about this one? They're all exactly the same, right? times 95 in every single year, that's going to be a lot of revenue coming into your place. Absolutely. 